Hey folks, it's Motor Mind here. So we're just gonna be working on the Freelander today um, with 1.8 K series engine. As you can see, we're doing a timing belt kit. So the timing belt, a genuine Rover one. Um, let me get you the part number here in case anybody's interested. So it's a timing belt. Got the tensioner. Now this has got the automatic tensioner on this one here. I did confirm that. Part numbers as well as your water pump the seals and of course coolant now this has got bigger than I need but this is what we're doing today so um, let's get going here motor mind all right so the first thing I'll do here is I remove the right front tire access into there into the um, timing belt and stuff is I'm gonna jack it up and um, subtract it up a little bit. I need to have some pressure. Put down. And then just crack off the uh, little nuts here. Oh. Yeah. Right, so, uh, just if you haven't already, um, please subscribe to my channel as well as click that like button if you like this video. Comment down below and uh, click that thumbs up, uh, click the um, bell icon so you can see when I post more videos up. And I'll post them up when I can and if I can. Uh, down the road, I'll be doing different vehicles as well as not just the Land Rovers. But um, this is a project I'm working on right now, so yeah, please. Uh, and we'll uh, keep going on this here. So let's get two hands on the screen. Alright, so the vehicle jacked up on jack stands, handbrakes on, it's in gear. Um, jack stands on both sides. So the next thing to do, take off the timing, upper timing belt cover. Uh, so, take on those, I think they're, I think they're 8 mil, 8 or 9 mil in there, so I'll get on that here. Alright, so the 10 mil, just um, a reference. There's one there, there's one there, one there, there's one in there, one down in here. Actually, it would be a different size. Uh, I knew there was some there. It's smaller. The two top ones are 10. I think this guy down here. Or one of these guys is smaller. I think this one down is well in there. And that one there is the 8. So I knew there's an 8 mil. I wasn't completely wrong. Alright, so. Down there, Let's see if I can point at it there. Down there, it's eight mil. You have to get that out as well. And this one here, it was missing, but I found a bolt that fit. But it's kind of a, it's a um, it fit, but it's one of them. So this isn't factory to have that in there. There's supposed to be a bolt in there. Mine was missing, so I, uh, I found one that fit. Right, so once you got them out, just gonna give it a little wiggle. And top timing cover comes right out. So, let's get off the side for now. The upper part of your timing belt. And then um, there's a lower cover, you gotta take the accessory belts off. And then you gotta get the crank pulley off on the bottom. And see in here, there's a cover here. This guy's gotta come off. If you have your lower tray on, uh, mine doesn't have a lower tray, um, rock guard. I'm gonna take that off as well. You can get to the engine, you got to support the engine because you're gonna have to take the upper engine mount off. You can take this off here, get the belt out. But we'll kind of get to that later uh, at the end. Also, you need to drain your cooling system as well um, because we're changing the water pump and obviously all your coolants can come flying out. So you can either, um, your best is just try to drain it down as much as you can beforehand. I you can either try to preserve the coolant if it's still in good. I know this is mine's still quite good. 
I don't think it's the minimum, but the vehicle is tilted up. So <laughs> I don't lose any coolant. It's extra sits there, but the vehicle's tilted right now. So I um, don't see nobody's saying that it's low in coolant because it's not low in coolant. It's just because the vehicle is tilted. <coughs> um, I try to preserve as much as I can. Obviously, catch it because I'm on the street. I don't need pouring coolant everywhere. So um, I, I do have a tray I'll be putting underneath there. Uh, um, but I do have brand new coolant anyways. And I've got more than enough for the system, so if it's if it's no good or if it gets contaminated my bucket's a little dirty, then I'm not going to worry too much about it. But yeah, so um, it's probably the best thing is just try to do everything up top you can and then we'll work on the bottom here. So um, the last thing I see obviously we're doing is the, the top engine mount. Because I'll have to, you have to use the um, floor jack. I something like that. I want to support the engine. Then we can lift the engine up and down a little bit. We need to support on the engine on the bottom on the sump. But we'll uh, get the accessory belt off and stuff first. And um, there's a couple of special tools you need. I'll show you in a second. All right. So I need this. I'm gonna need a timing kit. I got this guy here. You're gonna need this guy here. It's gonna lock the cam together. Um, and also you're gonna need this guy here. And that's gonna go in the back um, into the flywheel and locks the crank in the position. And um, you can get like the, obviously the special, the Rover, Land Rover tool, but um, like that goes on there, that uh, works for like that. But it's, you know, if you're doing your own vehicle, unless you're doing loads, it's not really worth it. This kit cost me about 18 pounds, um, including shipping. And it's more than enough that'll do this. Um, I did actually get, I have a, this is a plastic version, the metal version, somewhere around here, I'll go find it. I ordered that, and then I ordered this afterwards, but um, this kit would be more than enough, especially if you do your own personal vehicle. Um, if you're doing like loads of these, then you're probably better off to you know, get the proper tool, um, but you know, for your average Joe, I just didn't see it being worth it. Um, this thing here is kind of a universal kit, it'll work on you know, several different vehicles, so that's what I went with. Okay, so like I said, I ordered before I got this kit. I did order this. Um, as you can see, it's it's for the Rover 60, uh, K16. As you can see, the plastic one, the metal one, they're pretty much the same. So I didn't really need this, but I had ordered this beforehand. All right, just for you, just real quick to get this cover off here. There's two 10 mil bolts, one there, and then one back in there. And then I think there might be one, there's one also up in there as well. There's three of them, three 10 mil bolts. You wanna pull them out and then this cover here should, let's see if you held in anything else, should pop right out of there. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so got the cover off there. Uh, and then to get the um, accessory belts off. First thing I'm gonna do, get the one off for the power steering. Um, as you can see, it sits right in there. Let's just uh, back out this a little bit here so it's easier for you to see. Right? Uh, there's a tensioner right here. And on there, you just get my hand out of the way. Right there, you can see you put your, um, you put a socket on there. I think I'd see 13, I'm mistaken. Yeah, 13 mil. And um, you want to have it turning like to tighten up. Anyway, that says you turn it, it uh, slacks off. So you just push this guy down, that's off the tension, and then obviously it's easier with two hands. You flip that off, and come up, and then it's out of the way. Now, you can take that right off if you want, I probably will, off to one side. Have a quick look, make sure the belt's in good shape. Doesn't look too, too bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, make sure there's no cracks or anything in the belt itself. Um, if they start cracking or you see teeth or something, got chunks missing, then you best do um, change the serpentine belt. And this one here, you can show you. Tensioner's right there. As you can see, that's where you want to put your, your socket on there. And this guy here might be a little bit tighter. Obviously, it's running a few more accessories. So, 
Let's see here, yeah. It should work here. So you saw tension off like that. Turn this one handed like let tension off. And then just flip it off there. Now what I have done, um, my reference is I took some pictures before. Um, yeah, I can do that, or what I've, I've done um, in the past is I've drawn a quick, just a rudimentary um, picture of where the where all the all the pulleys are. Uh, I named them so C for crank, um, AC, tensioner, idler, you know, alternator, stuff like that. And then I just drawn a route of what the battery, uh, how the how the belt goes. Uh, it's just a you know, these are quite simple. They're not that complicated to put on here. Some vehicles, you know, a, a bigger belt takes you know to go, to go around a lot of different things you have to go a certain route <clears throat> so it's always just best just to kind of draw it out for yourself or take pictures whatever is easiest for you uh, and then you can go back and just refer to them and make sure that you know and it just makes your life a lot easier um you know as much as you think you can remember sometimes it's just that you forget that one tensioner or idler so it's uh it's always just something i've learned in the past just makes life a little bit easier a little bit quicker right so, I always like this tap, check my, check all my pulleys and stuff as well, once I got it off, see if there's any noises or anything feels rough. Um, just, you know, for future reference, we need to change a puller, uh, idler or a tensioner or something like that. We all feel alright though, don't feel rough. Okay, so, can I get the lower belt timing cover off? Obviously we're going to have to get this. Yeah, the crank pulley off. Now, I've heard that these are really, really quite tight. Um, and that's where the tool comes in handy. And I'll, I'll show you kind of where to, where to put that and install that. But the first thing I'm going to do is, there should be some timing marks here and on, the, on the pulley. And this is kind of a, Make sure that, there's timing marks here. There's also timing marks inside where the on the um, on the timing belt crank pulley as well. So this guy here, up to the center there. It's a bit hard to see. As you can see, it's uh, a bit of corrosion and stuff. I'm gonna have to get a, a wire brush on that. Just a little tip here, and it's something I just thought of, and I actually thought the other day, I meant to do it um, before I started here. Um, to make it easier to turn the engine over by hand, pull your spark plugs out, uh, and set them off to the side, and then it just makes life a lot easier. Um, just to kind of turn the engine over, uh, or else then you're fighting against the compression of the engine. Um, and it's just, this said, you can do it, but it just, you know, makes things a little bit easier for, on yourself. Pull them if it's easy enough. You know, some vehicles spark plugs we get like a V V6 or or some you have to take the intake out and stuff like that, like some four cylinders and stuff. Um, in that case, then you know it's up to you if you want to take the extra time or if you just want to just push, you know, just turn the engine over, fight against compression. But um, on this particular engine, it's not that big of a deal. Obviously, you can see it's quite easy. I don't have even the beauty cover on this. Um, I bought the vehicle and they didn't have it, so that's just one last thing we have to take off for doing stuff like this, isn't it? So it's not a massive job doing this, taking the plugs out. Yeah, see, this, this makes things a little bit quicker and easier for me. Turning it over, turn the engine over, trying to get the top dead center. Like that. Like that. I've seen a previous video where it did a uh, Change the spark plugs on this, uh, and I was also looking for a uh, misfire. Check it out. Let's 
Okay, it should come out. So it's just the, the boots here. Yeah. So it's going to be over here. It's going to sit across over there. And here, obviously, it's for. I'm just going to set that up on there. It's going to the way. And then it's just spark plugs down in there. Let me get that out now. So what I've done instead of pulling the plugs out all the way, all I've done is just loosen them off quite a bit. And just left them down, down in there just in case anything would fly around because I'm outside and it happens to be in the cylinder and down in there I can see it and won't end up in the combustion chamber. Um, you know, I have to get like leaf or dirt. It was kind of help keep them clean, but it allows the compression to come out. So I'll be able to kind of turn the engine over a lot easier by hand using my half inch ratchet. So Yeah, so that should be more than enough. And now I can um, clean off that crank pulley. And I'll be able to see where the, uh, I think it's a 22 mil uh, socket on there as well. So I'll um, use on that, so I'll go get that. All right, so I cleaned it off. See the mark? I've actually marked it with a paint pen. Just uh, make it a little easier. We see this little notch. Just kind of it's in there. Uh, and now, you see, top dead center should be right there. Just TD, TDC. Uh, can get it to focus there a bit better. See TDC top dead center. So you need to cut. Kind of, engine's gonna obviously. Well, and it's always spin um, clockwise. So I'll uh, we'll spin it, turn it over, and we'll, uh, by hand, and uh, on there, until you get down to top dead center. So as you can see, because I took this, loosened this off, it's just so much easier to turn this by hand. So a little bit of compression, a little bit of resistance, but. me uh, top dead center I see if I can In my view there that looks to me to be lined right up on top dead center uh, yeah. so you can get my view so there you are so yeah I would say that's about right there now I'm gonna lock the crank the tool and uh, I'll show you where that is. Hey folks, let me show you here. Let's see if I back this up a little bit here. So in here, let's see it. inspection covers right there. And this is the front of the engine. Um, there's your exhaust manifold there. There's two bolts there, there's one bolt there, one bolt there, nut and bolt. You should take them right off. Or 15 mil. 18 mil bolt, uh, 15 mils uh, a bolt and 18 mils uh, nut. Right on the, um, it's on the bell housing of the, uh, of the engine and the gearbox. So it's just for reference, you want to just kind of see straight down in there. So I'll just get to the top or the bottom. I just have to go from the top. Bolt. And you see, so there's the cover there. And it sits like that. And then once you get the bolts off, just pop it off like that. I'll uh, give you a quick look underneath and I'll show you what I mean. Just in case for, for anybody. You can see in there. There's your flywheel, the cover removed. And the tools can go just sit in there. And you use one of those bolts, you're gonna put it through there. So get the tool. Well, uh, we'll put it. All right, folks. So that is where the um, the tool goes. Now there is supposed to be a bolt hole there, but this doesn't quite line up with the bolt hole. So I couldn't get a bolt in. But 
because where it sits in there, it's only part, if you look around here, it's quite thin, but there's a little notch out. Put that in there. What I'm able to do is get that on there, put the uh, socket on, wrench, and because I'm pulling against it, like that, and that notch is in there, it can't go anywhere else. It's holding itself on there, so. And that is really what I really need that for. Long as stays in there, I mean, it's up to you if you get it cool or not. It seems to work for me, so I'm not gonna complain too much. Ugh. Put that there. Now I'm getting the lower timing cover out. Oh, I don't know if you can see this bolt there. So I like to always do myself. I like to stick this back in here because I don't want that coming off on me. So I also may need to use this to double check my timing. So I'm gonna put that back in there, like so. Take it off, and then we'll make sure you get it all timed up, uh, set. They will take the tensioner off and we'll uh, replace the bolt. I uh, replace the belt, pardon me. Um, obviously, you gotta get the, uh, the motor engine mount slots to come out as well as the coolant. Right. Okay, so we'll uh, jump on that now. Right, so, just a quick one here getting this uh, lower cover off. Um, there's a 10 mil there, 10 mil there, which unfortunately fucking broke on me. And there's actually one behind the tensioner here. <sighs> you can see it in there. It should be a pain in the butt. I tried to get the tensioner off there, but it doesn't. Not getting a lot of success. So what I'm trying to do here. I do a smaller extension. Try getting behind it. I might have to go and get something a little different here. That ain't gonna work. Right, so I have a solution here. That's a, it's a bit of a pain, but they get to. Yeah, because it can't even go in that way, so. Yeah, it'd be nice if we get this off, but I took one bolt off there. I think there's another one up top there. I have to pull the tensioner down around. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. I don't know why Land Rover's done that, but okay. Well, uh, we'll get it out. Alright, see so I managed it. So it's the 8mm behind there. And uh, this used a quarter inch deep socket. I'll be able to get right in behind the tensioner and get it out. Little turns there. And I should be able to get my hand in there. Give me a couple of little turns. <laughs> Switch hands. A few more turns, a little ratchet. And we should, uh, should be alright. So, the heavy breathing and legging it around. It's done, the things to do. Alright. I reckon it's nearly got her there. Stick the, stick the socket on there. And it's a bit of an awkward place to put a bolt. It should cut me nice and smooth. It's gonna come out. It's gonna fight me all the way out too. I'm 
So he's working on automotive. It's easy when he would do it. Alright, let's decide to fight me at the end here. Alright, let's see a second here. Alright, so what I managed to do is I put a put the tensioner, put the scale around, and then I was able to kind of get in there with my socket and a wobble extension. Everybody knows what a wobble extension is. I'll show the end. The end looks like that. Right. But it doesn't even put a socket on. Get on there. Not everybody knows this, so. Come on, get on there. This allows the uh, socket to kind of move around. Now these ones here are ones done by Snap-on. We push it all the way, it holds it steady, like a normal extension, and you pop it out. Is, they work okay, the only thing is I find is if you have to put a little bit of pressure on onto a bolt or a nut, and you push and you have the wobble and it clicks in like that, and you don't have to wobble anywhere. So um, if I were to buy another set, I'd probably buy just the ones with the wobble on the end, and then have the separate. I have a separate set of extensions, three, uh, quarter inch extensions that are just normal ones, and then if, because I, I got these because of ones with the wobble function, but it does help. Which is why I have them. So that's it's done. That's out. This guy comes out of the way. What else I've done also is that this is our uh, there's two little marks, little dimples on the uh, on the pulley for the um, for the crank time and bolt. And you want to have I've marked them up, I've bolt back in because you need to have those that, those lined up to be a mark in here. I think it's this guy here. It's right there. You need to have bring them around, and then that is the timing mark for the crank. And that should line up, and any camshaft should line up. So I've, uh, I've took my tool out, by the way, of the flywheel, just in case anybody wants to know. So that is out of the way. So I don't know, I never quite trust um, marks on, on uh, covers. I like to use the actual ones in the crank itself. Um, and then also use the cam ones as well. So that should be lined up there, top dead center. And because of that, <coughs> check my timing works. In there. Is your, there. your timing works there for your crank and you have your cam shafts right there. And there, they should point to each other. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark those up with my paint pen as well. And then that way I'm going to, and also I'm going to pray mark on the timing cover case. On this little tooth. It's going to go straight across. And what I'll do there is then I'll know that's, um, we'll time it all up. Everything's going to be back where it should be. Um, and I'll be happy. So, that's, uh, I always just like to, you know, do timing and stuff like that. I always like to just double check and like double things up and, and ensure things. Um, it's a job, it's not a bad, it's a horrible job, but something that, you know, obviously if you do wrong, really, really bad things can happen. Um, these are interference engines, so if, you're, uh, if your timing is off too much, you do valve damage and engine, you know, do major catastrophic damage. So it's something you want to take your time, make sure you do it right. Also, you can see with, uh, also got my timing. Special tool, locking the cams, so it goes in like that, slot straight in. You can see, you should do that correctly. You should line right up those timing marks like that, and then that way, I take this off my cams. I'm going to stay where they need to be um, stay. They're not going to move too much. Um, they're going to they're going to be you know they're going to stay stay where they should be. So now it's um everything timed up there. Everything's fine there. So 
You can now release the tensioner. Tensioner is right there. Use the Allen key. Uh, you want to undo the bolt here, and then you can take you can, uh, take that off. As you can see it's kind of from beforehand. What actually I'm going to do beforehand is I'm going to make the coolant drained out the block. And we'll um, drain the coolant out and we'll also release the, um, the upper engine mount. Just trying to think, see the best way of doing that. So obviously those two bolts are going to come out there. This guy here is going to come off there. And it looks like it's that guy there. And you take this whole unit out of the bay. And then... I think I'll be golden from there. I'm gonna take anything else off. No. Okay. Alright, so if I just crack them off, I might even get this tool out of the way for now. I'll stick my um my crank tool back in. Now we know the crank is locked up. I can hear you. Okay. I may, I may, may not leave that in there. Um, I've done tiny bolts before. A lot of times, I always want to have on my crank. I can kind of just move it a little bit. It just kind of helps you get attention, set my tensions and everything um, properly on the. Uh, and the belt and stuff. So it's marked up anyway, so I can, as long as I know my marks are lined up. Uh, honestly, you don't have to. And I would recommend having the special tools if you want to be brave. And not the only thing I, <clears throat> I knew is to get way of locking the crank up to get the crank bolt out because they're quite tight. Or else all you do is just end up spinning the engine over. You know, if you put it into gear, it doesn't always work. So, um, sometimes you just turn the engine over anyways. So, um, yeah, I do recommend that. And just for the price of the tools, it's probably the best. Just make sure that when you know it's done right, everything's going to be, um, everything's locked up the way it should be. So, we'll get this coolant. Coolant green don't know. Right, so, let that pulled out of there. So, like I said, it's just a bolt there. Not there, two bolts on there. Come straight up and out. And, um, yeah, that's all I really need to get that out. I don't need to take this off. It's in the way, so uh, let's leave it where she is. No, it's just, um, drop that there. So just undo the bolt. Get out of the way. Out of the way. Just quick to show you here. Um, you see how the, the tensioner is there, and uh, you'll see this guy here it has to line up. You see that line there. So when you tighten it up, and you just kind of have it like the way that it is, where it's kind of lined up. If you can, you can see that pretty well. Right, so you'll see it on the new one. It'll kind of move and stuff. You get it on there, so. Uh, I see how the spring and stuff there it sits on top of that bolt. And you want to line it and it'll point at itself. Right, so that's just kind of how we want to have that put the one back in. You want know, to make sure it's kind of looking, no, before you take tensioner off. I was just gonna make sure you know how the old one is on there. To make sure you line it up and put it on correctly. All right, so now I got that backed off there. Let's see now we got movement. Timing bolt's loose now. So now we can just pop it off here. What I'm gonna do, what I always like to do, I always like to just kind of double check. I'm gonna make sure 
they're both about the same length. Um, it's just in case, you know. So you just pull, pull here, here, and you pull them out, pull it tight. So like, as you can see, they're both the same. Uh, both done by Gates. This is just your rover. This engine. And um, I don't think they're they're not directional. Some gate belts will have a direction of spell or rotation, but these ones don't seem to have that. Um, fair enough, I did take that off without putting the special tool in, but we'll put that in now. Um, as you can see, the, they didn't move at all. So, so it's up to you if you want to buy these tools or not. I'm going to confirm, make sure those are still lined up, and I'll make sure the tool's in there. But Is it really necessary? Are you, could you go with not having it? Yeah, but I think it makes life easier. So, and so the crank's already got it's the one in that one, so the crank wasn't moving. Quite honest, the most important thing is when you put your new belt on, is you want to make sure it's timed up. Obviously, coming out, if things move a little bit, you can move them back. You know, you can put a little spanner on there, tilt it a little bit, but, you know... Um, like I said, they, they didn't even move, and part of that is probably because I don't have the, um, I got the spark plugs released, so there's no compression in the cylinders, so they weren't going to push against the valves and make them want to sp spin one way or the other, because I don't have tension on them, so, um, yeah, that's probably why, and, um, the top, obviously top dead center, all the valves must be closed, because a lot of times if you have spring tension, um, from one of the, the valves being open, it'll sometimes it'll make one of your cams want to shift because it's it's on the lobe. But and this one here, obviously, it's not much on there, so or it's just sitting at the sweet spot. All right, so we'll get the um, the water pump out taken out now, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we got the water pump out now. Uh, there's still a little bit of coolant stuck in there, um, but what we say is you can never get it all out. So, um, and then what I've, do is I, what I've done is I took a, a, like a, just a brass brush a little bit and just kind of cleaned up around where the um, old pump, what old gasket was. I uh, you know this rubber gasket, I just kind of just bright, lightly brushed around there, cleaned it off with the uh, with a rag or a bit of blue roll, so I used. That I had, and then now get the old one, the new one in. So we see, I make sure that the so they're both the same, which they are. And the, the old gaskets come off. Yeah, you know, you know, that's right. Do cleaning it. The new one on. The new one just kind of. I can see how that one they're squashed in there. When you tighten it down, then this this um gasket will squash so it kind of just sits in the loose right now because it's just like a, it's round and once it's tightened down then that'll squash out and seal up so when we put it in you use kind of two hands hold it on there and then there's a couple of little keating locating dowels um you see one on the bottom there if you want this to the top left yes you should look in dowels and then put the um put the new one uh, Water pump in, and then just kind of tighten it up, and just kind of want to work around in a circle, and just kind of make sure it's all seated in there, nice and torqued up, and uh, nice and uh, snug down. Well, and then um, once you get that, we'll just clean up in here a little bit, try to dry off some of this real, real quickly, uh, so that the um, so that the belt doesn't get wet, and uh, then we'll start doing the belt. All right, so we're out here now. Is yeah, so our uh, water pumps installed? And all tightened up, and we've got the uh, the tensioner in as well. Um, just a little side note: when you're doing this, just take your tensioner completely out before taking the um, water pump out. It makes it a lot easier to see the bolts. Put your water pump in, then put your belt tensioner back on. Um, just little tricks and tips. If you're interested, so once you put that on there, tensioner is on. Um, it's not torqued up all the way. Um, but it's just just now nipped down enough. Now when you want to do a belt What you want to do Is you want to have all your slack 
any tension inside. So you want to do is you want to put, you want to start kind of where the tension is. Right. You want to work your way around, keeping it tight all the way around until you come back up to your tensioner. And that's where you have, I want to have all your slacks. You want to have those nice and taunt all the way around. So wherever your tensioner is, you want to start from there and work your way around. All right, and then that way, uh, you'll be able to get it on and put your tension. It should be going on your tensioner last. Um, there may be exceptions for some vehicles. Um, in in uh, certain vehicles, you may have an exceptions to rule uh, in your certain in your in service manual. Then obviously follow them. But for the most part, uh, most um, it's obviously a lot easier to do with two hands. Uh, for the most part. That's the general rule that I've always followed and I've always, um, it's always been a lot easier to get the belts on and make sure it's, everything stays in time. So, uh, well, I need two hands for this, so I'll just do that. All right, so a bit of a faff here, but um, better than so how, how I've kind of done this one is I started at the water pump kind of around the crank, come up around the, the exhaust, around the uh, intake, and then um, around to the tension. So pull that out just a little bit. I haven't, I haven't released the tension yet. Uh, I'm just gonna set my, my belt a little bit more. I think I got it a bit too far back. It's gonna rub on that back cover. Oh, so it's gotta give it a little jiggle, jiggle. I think I've pushed it back too far. You might um, be a little bit keen here. Work the belt a little bit. Just I don't want it to be making noise and stuff like that. Right. Should clear. So once you got that on. Set our tensioner, and then we're going to, which, as I said, we should get it back to where um, it was in the original. On the original one was. So we're going to take. We're going to take this guy here. Um, we can use an Allen key. I mean, we use a three eighths. So, if you watch the bottom there, you'll see where it all lines up. So you get that line up there. Turn the tension anti-clockwise, not clockwise. I did correct that. So you can kind of show that you can. So there's a turn it. So you just going to point and line up. The point to lines up there. We're going to do up a bolt. And then we're going to take all the locks off, all the uh, tools out, and then we're going to turn the engine over by hand um, about three or four times, full revolutions, like a full, um, and then we're going to double check our timing and make sure that that is set, still sitting where it should be. If not, then we'll loosen it off and do it again. All right, folks, so got the timing belt on there. Uh, tensioner set. It should be. Yep. You see the tensioner. Get there, attention is where it should be. All the time marks are like now. What I've done once you've done that, time I've got everything set. Take your tool, your timing tools out, turn the engine over two or three times at least, then recheck your timing. So you want to set so you can see the timing marks there. So you can see tool fits in, 
lined up and that's lined up where it should be there so they know the timing is good and in contact and stuff always do that always just do it by hand a couple times if it happens to jump then you know you've only done it by hand if you need contact you can stop um so it's just best don't just throw a belt on the way okay good throw it and then go full send that's uh how things can tend to break so always you know, turn over by hand at least two or three times four times however many times you want but uh, but that's good so now next thing in here is build it back up refill the coolant um bleed all the air out and then um should jobs are good and, and then that should be good for another eighty thousand miles or more and uh we'll put i'll put that in the service book so that way uh i know it's all been done i know when it was last done date and time i think it's every five years eighty thousand kilometers or i think it's five years a hundred thousand kilometers actually so um so this is doing i meant to say a hundred thousand miles not kilometers i uh sorry doing time not mileage um, so that'll be it thanks for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe, click that like button, and uh, click the bell for notifications. See you soon. Thanks.